Good morning, and welcome to the historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We pray that you are in good health. We ask all present to please respect the instructions given by our parish ushers and the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers as requested, maintaining a social distance of two meters, and wearing face masks when entering, leaving, or moving from one place to another within the church. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting from the church. Our presider today is Archbishop Peter Hunt. Our processional hymn is 474 in the CBW, Lord, you search me and you know me. Please stand for the processional hymn. today, the Mass in time of pandemic, and it's uh, for, as the first week of school for people in this province and for uh, throughout Canada pretty much. We pray in a special way for the teachers and students and staffs of our schools, and we pray for our leaders for wisdom to, to guide us uh, in the best possible way as we continue to, to deal with this pandemic that we may worthily bring all of our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father, we pause to call to mind His goodness and to ask forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, our refuge in every danger, to whom we turn in our distress, in faith we pray, look with compassion on the afflicted, grant eternal rest to the dead, comfort to mourners, healing to the sick, peace to the dying, strength to health care workers, wisdom to our leaders, and the courage to reach out to all in love, so that together we may give glory to your holy name 
Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and there is no one, no God but one. Indeed, even though there are many so-called gods in heaven and on earth, and in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father from whom all good things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now that they think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ has died are destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good for those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even the sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. We've got a rather catchy phrase at the beginning of the first reading today. Paul says to the Corinthians, Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Uh, Today at 11 o'clock, I've got the opening mass for St. Boniface School, and I'm going to use that phrase. And I'm going to talk to the young people about the fact that going to school is about gaining knowledge, and the challenge for us is to use that knowledge with love. Paul, speaking to the Corinthians, is dealing with a situation that they're having in Corinth. In Corinth, most of the Christians uh, are coming from a a, a Greek background. They're they're not Jewish people. Uh, And so they're very familiar uh, with the Greek gods and the Greek way of worship. And so apparently, uh, at that time, a lot of times to give worship to the gods, you offered them a a sacrifice, an animal sacrifice. And so these animals would be sacrificed in the temple, and then that meat uh, from those things would be butchered and sold to people. So it was uh, uh, a way of uh, the temple uh, making money was uh, butchering and, and selling these sacrificial offerings. So for these new Christians, uh, for some of them, uh, they were concerned about eating this meat because if they ate this meat, was this a sign of them going back to belief in the old gods or giving worship to these false gods? And Paul, in dealing with this, is saying, okay, now for us as people of knowledge, we realize that that's nonsense. Uh, we know that those gods don't exist and the meat is meat, so eat it and enjoy it. But we shouldn't let that knowledge keep us from being compassionate towards these scrupulous people, our brothers and sisters, who who haven't been able to embrace that knowledge. And so Paul concludes that he's not going to eat meat anymore simply so that he doesn't scandalize these brothers and sisters of his that are still struggling with a scrupulosity uh, that uh, is worrying them. The Gospel passage today, Jesus speaks to the disciples and through them to us, about that call that we have to reach out, especially to those who aren't reaching out to us, that we're called to love our enemies, that we're called to give to those who cannot afford to give back to us, 
uh, that we're called to be kind and compassionate to all as our Heavenly Father has been. And the reading concludes with, for the measure you give will be the measure you get back. These readings today, I think, give you and I lots to reflect on, uh, both in terms of, in the first reading, looking at the knowledge that we have and saying, okay, now is it something that puffs me up or is it something that I use and love to help others? And in terms of the gospel passages, for us to look and say, okay, am I being faithful to living as Jesus did? Uh, are there areas in my life where I still bear resentments against people or where I'm failing in my Christian duty to, to love and to give uh, to others without expecting in return? In the Mass, we celebrate God's great love for us and his willingness to give himself totally for us, expecting nothing in return. As we give God praise for his goodness, we ask him to nourish us with his word, with his body and blood, so that we may truly be worthy sons and daughters of our God, that we may live in such a way that our knowledge does not puff us up, but rather through our use of love helps to build up the greater community. God bless you. Let us stand and with love offer to the Lord our prayers of petition. We begin by praying for our Pope and for all our religious and civil leaders, for God's guidance for them, and that they may have the wisdom and courage to lead us well. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling with illness today, and for the health care workers and, and others who seek to, to assist them, for God's blessings upon them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are struggling with any type of disaster or persecution at this time. Uh, we remember the people of the West Coast of the United States that are dealing with uh, terrible fires. We pray, we remember all those who are struggling with this pandemic, especially the poor, especially those who are in oppressive situations. For God's blessings and grace for them, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, that they may have eternal rest with God in heaven, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our teachers and students and school staffs in this first week of school. We pray for them and for God's blessings and protection for them during this time. We pray to the Lord. Let us pause for a moment to bow our heads and offer our own personal intentions. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we offer you this morning, both those we have spoken aloud and those that are in our hearts, for they are offered through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, the gifts we offer in this time of peril. May they become for us by your power a source of healing and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word to whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope. Me, your unworthy servant, all the clergy, and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, and St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A prayer for those who are unable to receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. To ensure that the reception of Holy Communion takes place in a safe, prudent, and respectful manner, we ask that you please respect and adhere to the following instructions. 
Instead of the individual attestation, Amen, by communicants at the time of receiving Holy Communion, there will be one general attestation for everyone before the distribution begins. Those wishing to receive communion are asked to ensure that their face mask is properly placed in place before coming forward, remain in their pew until invited forward by the ushers, maintain social distancing of two meters in the communion line, sanitize their hands before receiving communion. As communicants approach the front of the communion line, we ask that you sanitize your hands, bow towards the host, in silence, receive the host in your hands. Move to the side to consume the host. Return to your pew as directed by the ushers. Any person who cannot receive Holy Communion in the hand is welcome to come forward to receive the blessing. the body of Christ. One bread, one body, one cup, one coal, one faith, one spirit, present in One faith, 
Let us pray. O God, from whose hand we have received the medicine of eternal life, grant that through this sacrament we may glory in the fullness of heavenly healing through Christ our Lord. I invite you to join with me in praying the prayer of Pope Francis to Mary for health and protection during the coronavirus pandemic. O Mary, you always shine in our path as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the cross took part in Jesus' pain, keeping your faith firm. You, salvation of your people, know what we need and we are sure you will provide so that, as in Cana of Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform to the will of the Father and to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows to lead us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Under your protection we seek refuge, Holy Mother of God, Do not disdain the entreaties of we who are in trial, but deliver us from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people, keep them safe, defend them, prepare them, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, they may persevere always in your love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn is number 630 in the CBW, Lord, make us servants of your peace. Thank you. 